Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, we'll learn about a new style of writing asynchronous code, which is async and await. So before starting with the video, I would recommend you to check out the complete series from start to learn everything in depth. If you want to learn any other stuff, you can check out other playlists. So enough of talking, let us start with the topic. So in the previous videos, we created a function called as arrange items on plate that was supposed to prepare a plate with food items and resolve it as a consolidated value. Also, we rejected the promise if the plate contained a glass of water, as you can see in the if check. The implementation that we made in that video was promise based. We also learn about handling errors with promises and also about special methods on promise API. The link for both the videos can be found in the i button at the top right corner of the video. So in this video, we'll convert the very same promise based implementation into an implementation based on async await. So I'll copy the above code. So I'll paste it here. So this was our promise based implementation for the code. Now we will convert this code into async await. But for that, we have to make use of two keywords called as async and await. I've discussed them in great depth in my video on demystifying async await. So the link for that can be found down below. So first thing that you need to understand is that async await is just a syntactical sugar over the promise space implementation. And the sole reason for its introduction was to ensure ease and readability of your code by giving it a synchronous feel. So first thing first, async await syntax can only be used in case of functions and you decorate your functions with the async keyword in front of your functions. So if you want to make any function as async function, you define a function, say hello, and then you decorate your function with the async keyword, just like this. And with just the async keyword added, the function automatically will return a promise when it gets invoked. So again, if you see this, if I hover over this, you can see it says function hello will return a promise. So just by using this keyword async, in front of your function, the function automatically will start returning a promise when it gets invoked. So let us create a function and decorate with async keyword. Then we'll get to the other keyword of the pair, which is await in just a minute. So I'll just copy some lines from the previous implementation and map that to our new implementation based on async await. And we will understand each line in great depth. So what I will do is, I will change the name of this function and say init and let us invoke the function on the root scope of the file. I'll paste the code here that we earlier wrote that was promise based implementation and we'll convert this entire code into an implementation based on async await. So now comes the second part of the puzzle which is the await keyword. Now in async functions you will be able to make use of the await keyword. So whatever code inside our async function returns a promise, you will be able to decorate that with the await keyword. In my video on demystifying async await, I discussed about how await keyword waits for the promise to get resolved and how async await as a whole is using generators and the yield keyword under the hood. The link for that video can also be found down below. So let us convert this implementation into an async await implementation. So what I will do is I will copy the very first line of our code, cut this out and let us say const and I will say plate with tomato and I will use the await keyword to pause the implementation here at this instance. Okay. And we will wait for our promise to get resolved at line number 89 before proceeding to further lines of code. So await and paste this here. Now this will return a promise and you are waiting here at line 89 for the promise to get resolved and then you will store the result whatever result you get back will get stored in plate with tomato constant. So here once our plate with tomato gets resolved only then you will be able to proceed to further lines of code like if we get the plate with tomato I can log that to the console. And only when this gets resolved, then only you will be able to proceed to line number 90. Okay. Now here, what we need to do is we can remove this dot then handler. 
and also this console log plate and then we'll get another promise so we can use the wait keyword here and wait for this promise to get resolved and I will re uh, restore the resolved result in another variable called as plate with pepper and then again we'll log the plate with pepper to the console so plate with pepper and then again use the await keyword for arrange items on plate the plate has pepper and tomato and I will say const plate with pepper and tomato and let us log the constant to the console and finally Again, I will use the await keyword and I will wait for this promise to get resolved. That will basically resolve us with a glass of water. It will give us an error because we know that the code that we wrote here, if our plate contains water, then we will reject our promise. Okay, so it will throw an error. So here we will be getting an error and for that we will be using error handling mechanism of async await a bit later. So I will say const and I will say plate with water and I will log this to the console so I'll say console log plate with water so as you can see here in our promise space implementation we were using dot then and dot catch for waiting for our promises to get resolved or error out so whenever you make use of the await keyword, you are introducing a pause at that line. So we are introducing a pause at line number 95 and waiting to get the resolved data before proceeding further to line number 96 and to the rest of the code. Also the code remains non-blocking. It won't block the execution and remember it is just a syntactical sugar or the promise API. So the entire code that we are uh, that we have written here will be wrapped in a promise so it internally get transformed into a promise based implementation and you will get all the convenience with these two keywords now here the line number 95 will error out just because our plate now contains water so we need some error handling mechanism to deal with this so we'll use the try catch mechanism here and we'll pass on the error that we get the catch block in the try catch mechanism will receive the error that we pass to the reject function in our promise that we made in the previous video as you can see so this will reject with an error and that error will get received in the catch block in our try catch handling mechanism so here we will receive that error and i'll copy these lines of code here so whatever error we get from the rejection case when we constructed a promise in our arrange items on plate function so if any of the three promises that we are having here these if they get rejected this will definitely get rejected because it contains a glass of water but if by chance any of these promises also get rejected then we'll make it into the catch block to handle the error so here we can log the error to the console so i can say console.error error and finally so we have another block which is the finally block so we can optionally make use of it and then if you have any resource allocation that you had done prior to your async code which was used in your async code then you can release that in the finally block so you can see resource deallocation and memory freeing and the finally block will run whether the code within the try block succeeds or fails the finally block if present will always run no matter what so for now just let us write a log here and i will say console log finally all the valid plates are ready to be displayed and we have already invoked the init function that will run our async function so let us see the output of the code in the browser so you can see first we are getting the plate with the tomato then we are getting a plate with pepper then we are getting a plate with pepper and tomato and once we reached 
on this line so line number 95 we added out because we were having a water a glass of water on the plate and that is why that led to rejection then we went into the catch block so we handled it there and finally this will always run no matter what so we are getting finally all the valid plates are ready to be displayed so this was all about the video on async await again if you want to dive more deeper into it i have covered async await under the hood how it uses generators under the hood in great depth so don't forget to check that out and as a small bonus exercise you can check out the video on creating your own async await using generators the link for that video can also be found at the top right corner of this video